Hello! In today's video we're going to be talking about the idea and the concept of density. Now what is density? Density is a property of materials that we can use to identify uh, that material. It is also unique to every material. So we'll, we'll be talking a lot about how we can use this to identify certain, uh, certain compounds and molecules as we're moving on with the semester. So density is actually the ratio of the mass to the volume. Now that's a whole lot of words and whenever we have words in chemistry we can rearrange those into an equation which is a shorthand way of, of, doing, of writing a physical property. So density, which is what we're talking about, is equal to the ratio of the mass to the volume. That's just a fraction. Ratio means fraction. So mass, oops, the mass per volume. And the density units that we'll be dealing with can be anything that has that relates mass and volume. So it can be grams per milliliter, it can be kilograms per cubic centimeter, it can be anything that has a mass value up on top, a mass unit up on top, and a volume unit down on the bottom. So this is density. Of course, we as chemists, we're lazy in the way that we write. We don't want to write out the words every time we write out this equation. So we're going to write out just the first letter in each of these values. So D equals M over V. Okay. Now, this is the density equation. And what we're going to be doing for the, and what you're going to be doing for the rest of your chemistry career is rearranging this equation and solving for one of the variables. So in order to find the density, we need to know the mass and the volume of a, of a sample. If we wanted to know the volume, we would need to know the mass and the density. So we can rearrange this equation in a lot of different ways and calculate and determine one of the variables, one of the unknown variables. So what, what kind of physical properties do we know about density? Well, the, we automatically, and what you should be memorizing, is the density of water. That is something that you deal with every day. It's, it's required for life here on Earth. So let's, let's figure out what the actual number value is for the density of water. So the density of water is equal to one gram per milliliter. One of the easiest numbers to remember, right? It's just the number one. So we have density of water is equal to one gram per milliliter. How can this help us out? If we had a different sample, let's say of gold, uh, and we wanted to see if it was the solid gold, if we wanted to see if this was going to float in water or sink in water, we would have to look at the density. So if the density of gold is larger than one gram per milliliter, that material, the gold, would sink. And it does. The, the density of gold is about 19 grams per milliliter, way higher than the density of water, so that solid sinks. If we were talking about something that has less dense, that is less dense than water, that number would be smaller than the number one gram per milliliter, and that substance would float. So we can talk about density, and that's part of the reason why these things sink and float. And so we're going to be identifying based on the density of water and just kind of getting a physical representation of what's going on with these values. Now there's something to note about density. Density is called an intensive property. And what that means is the density of an object does not change based on how much of that object is present. So the density of one glass of water, of a glass of water, is the same as the density of a swimming pool of water. That density doesn't change. So that's called an intensive property. Intensive. So density is intensive. Doesn't matter how much material is present. Now, everything that makes up density is actually an extensive property. So everything on the right hand side is called extensive. Now what's an extensive property? It, the, the, the value or the property changes based on the amount of material that's present. So the mass of an object, let's say we had a little cube of gold and we started adding in more and more gold. Well that cube becomes heavier. So the mass does change based on the amount of material that's present. The volume is also an extensive property. What that means is if I had that cube of gold and I started adding more gold to it, the volume of that gold changes and expands and becomes bigger. So both of these values that are on the right hand side of the equation are called extensive. They do depend on the amount of material present, but the ratio of the two, this fraction, when you divide mass by volume, actually becomes an intensive property. 
So the density of an object does not depend on how much material is present. It's always constant. One glass of water is equal to one swim, the density of one glass of water is equal to the density of a swimming pool of water. But the masses, the things that make up the density, are extensive property. They do change as you add more material to the system. Uh, so this is just the idea of the concept of density. We'll be working a lot of problems. You're actually going to be working a lot of density problems all the way throughout your chemi chemistry career. We can deal density with gases, liquid, solids. doesn't matter what phase it's in. We will be talking about density in all of those phases. So with that, I want to say have a great night. I will see you all in class.